The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good. Billy Ray, feeling good to us. We start out the show like we usually do, but before we do that, I wanted to mention that we will have Stan Harley as our guest at the break from the Harley Stock Market Letter. Always a good uh, host. Uh, would, um, host would bring in some nice guests, and he's one of the ranked uh, folks in the um, Timer Digest, so that'll be fun. To, and he's got some great information always. Uh, the first one we look at, of course, is the uh, German DAX. You can see the daily chart. Uh, making that big three-drive pattern. And then on the 15-minute chart, you can see that the market has sold off a bit and then retested the highs again, you know, as we as we see things uh, happening. Now, um, I do want to bring to your attention one particular chart that uh, I think is important. We've talked about this in the past, but um, this is the Commodity Research Bureau's Commodity Index. And I wanted to bring this pattern to you because it's a very interesting one. You'll notice you have the three arrows. That is a three drive to a bottom pattern. And then you see the final bottom there. That's the third peak of the three peaks in the dome house. That's just the upside down version of it. And the important part here is since we've had this happen in August, we've rallied up and we've made a 61% retracement from the high we made last May in 2019. So it says... And this is a broad thing of all the commodities, folks. You, 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 you could trade the index if they have it, but I don't know. I'm just showing you that it, it's making a, a pretty big uh, top up in here, possibly. But uh, it looks very good longer term, but we could be into a p position where we could get some corrections. Now, remember, uh, this is Wednesday of this week. We're supposed to sign the uh, Chinese trade tariff deal. Whether that means very much or not, you know, I'm not so sure. So that's uh, pretty much. Now, uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention to you that I think is relatively important is uh, someone uh, sent me this, which I thought was very interesting because of uh, all of the volcanic action that we've seen down in the Philippines. But here in the United States, we've got one really active one that's in Yellowstone. And uh, you can see here the number of uh, eruptions at the Steamboat Geyser over the past uh, 53 years, 58 years, has increased uh, dramatically uh, this past year. Uh, I've heard stories that if that thing ever blows, that it'll take out about the half of the growing season uh, in, uh, of uh, most of the grains in the Midwest. It's supposed to be uh, that uh, ominous, but who knows? I don't know if you've ever been up there to Wyoming to see it, but it's it's really quite uh, quite spectacular. All right. Uh, the next one I wanted to talk about was a, a little bit of uh, what's going on here with this January 10th. I'm going to uh, post this. I hope you folks can read it easy enough because it just shows you all of the things that are happening here. Just give me a second. Um, this is a, a warning, basically. It's not a prediction of any kind that we're over these, you know, these aspects that we think are important. You know, and it takes a couple days for them to line up. In fact, if they do, but we'll have to do one thing at a time. Uh, getting back to the uh, Astro part again, I want to I want to focus on, on, on Jesse Livermore. J Jesse Livermore. Wow, just a minute here, folks. Uh, just one minute here. I'm going to post a chart from uh, Livermore. Uh, this is going back to the 1940s, folks. What Livermore did was he tried to buy at support and sell at resistance. That's really what he was trying to do. He was a very good technician. And if you'll notice that sell uh, pattern that he had up here, I put that in because that's what the sell pattern came in at. But that was nothing more than a head and shoulders pattern. Uh, that he was looking at. And then you see the bottom down there where the buy was. That was major support that lasted, uh, you know, several weeks. And that's the kind of things uh, that he's looking for. He's looking for lower tops, lower bottoms, 
higher bottoms, higher tops. That's what he's doing. And that's what you're trying to do. Uh, you know what? You know what we're watching. Yes, there's a big in uh, one big volcano in the Philippines. They had to close the Philippine Stock Exchange. Now that's geomagnetic stuff, folks. It has to be related to what's going on with these planetary things because these things have lined up very, very tightly. And usually when that happens, you know the, some big things happen. Uh, Norm Winsky sent me a link uh, uh, last over the weekend that showed going back uh, ooh, about. 15, about 2,000 years of uh, these different ones that occurred. I think there have been about 30 of them and all the big things that happened. And uh, so whether it means a lot or not, I don't know. All I all I know is that when I look at these things, uh, when they line up like this and I looked at the bob bottoms and tops in the stock market, it was, uh, it was very interesting that they came uh, very, very close, you know, to those things, these really uh, tight formations, you know, that we see. And that's uh, the, the thing, thing to look at. Here's one that will be coming up on March the 20th. Uh, this is the uh, Equinox for the spring equinox. Look at this one. This is going to be a, a really big one, too. You see how uh, around 65% of the natal chart is empty? That means that everything's lined up into one area. And those are just cycles that are coming up. Whether, whether it means anything to the stock market or not, folks, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm just re reporting it, and uh, no one has ever developed uh, the Holy Grail, and I don't think it's necessary because uh, all you're trying to do is to find a pattern that you can control your risk with. That's the real, uh, the real beauty of what you try to do with pattern recognition, because you don't know what's going to happen next for sure, but the only thing you can control in the risk-reward equation uh, is the risk. Okay, now we're going to move into the area of esoteria. <laughs> I think you'll get a, a, a interesting. This is a picture, folks. It's a painting by uh, Thomas Hart Benson, and uh, it, it's really a, it's a, really it's the sources of country music is what it's uh, what it's called. What's important about this is that the student of Thomas Hart Benson was none other than Jackson Pollock. Whose, whose uh, paintings go for hundreds of millions of dollars now. But I want you to focus on that, tr that train that's back there. You see that train with the big smoke coming out of it? I want to focus on something that I think you'll, you'll find very interesting. It's probably a coincidence, but we'll get up here to take a look at it, and we'll be able to do it. There we go. Bring it up. Now you look at that train. You see the number on the train, folks? 382. Hmm. Now, isn't it interesting that this was the painting that was hanging on the office of W.D. Gann? And if you believe that, boys and girls, I still have two shares of the Brooklyn Bridge. The reason why I was bringing this uh, picture to your attention is the fact that the the way that Benson wrote, and he was the he was the mentor of Jackson Pollock, is the everything that they did is is based on these spirals of the Fibonacci sequence. Uh, they sketch out these spirals and then they put the pictures over the painting. It's it's really amazing how how that stuff uh, unfolded. So anyway, we'll move on to the next thing. That's the end of my art lecture for the whole year. So you're you're free to uh, do it yourself for the rest of the year. Uh, the gold market, you know, we had a nice break. All we've done so far now is had a $17, we had a $20 rally. We've had a $17 pullback. So between the two numbers to watch today are uh, 15, uh, 1560 and 1540. Those are the ones you want to watch in that gold market. I'll bring it up to you, you can see it in just a minute. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, we'll have Stan Harley on here in about 12 minutes, but we'll take a look at the gold market. We'll start by looking at it on the weekly basis. The high we made up there at uh, 1613, that was a 78% retracement uh, of the high that we made back in 2012. It was also a perfect 61% retracement of the high made in August of 2011. That is really important because uh, when it stops there and breaks $70, it's important. Now, we've, you see we've, the $70 break happened, and we've had a little bit of a rally. We rallied back about uh, $23. But if we take a look at gold on a little bit shorter time frame, you'll get an idea of what we're talking about here. I'll pr point, bring this up so you'll be able to see it here. And uh, here it is over the past couple of days from the January the 9th to where we are here on the 13th. You'll notice that uh, last night when we came down and stopped uh, just a little below the 61% retracement, we hit 0.74. We were down, we went up $17. You see the perfect ABCD, each of those AB legs, $17 up, the move down, $17 up, the move up nine. If we get above uh, 15.59, this thing could uh, make another AB. BCD up to the big 382 level that we're watching. You notice the high at 1564 right in there, folks. That was almost a 38% retracement from the high that we made back on uh, the day of the fighting, which when, when gold got to 1317. So un until gold can get above 1566, you have to look at it as being bearish, in my opinion, because uh, the fact that that major 61% retracement was so very, very important, and the fact that the market's not able to give it, you know, bring it all back. I mean, it's not, it's really not being able to do that. And usually, markets, you've seen it in the stock market, bonds, others, but that's not happening this time. So it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to see if they're able to do that. That's the, the real key uh, to taking a look at it. Now, if we take a look at one other market, that's really important this week, and that is the, the crude oil market because let's just get up here. I wanted to show you the fact that we are we're trading a little bit below that 61% retracement now. I, I, I mentioned that if we – the real – look at this. We've come down really hard five days. We've given up uh, – 
We've given up $6 a barrel in, in supposedly the most bullish scenario you can have, which is war, which really didn't occur. So what we're looking at now is whether this support here at this 5880 is going to hold. We just we just took it out again. So we're down five days in a row now. The next level to look at, of course, would be 5710. That would be the 78% retracement of the low we made back on the 18th. Now, if we can hold that, then we've got a chance, you know, for gold to make a bottom. But, but right now, it's not giving us that chance because it's not showing that it's making a bottom. It keeps making lower lows. So that's going back to that Livermore chart. You know, if you're making lower lows, uh, they're probably going to go lower. If you're making higher highs, you're probably going to go higher. So we'll watch it very, very closely. Getting to the stock market, there's only one of the indices that did not make new highs, folks, and that is the Russell. So if you're interested in selling anything, sell the Russell. It's the weakest of all the stock market indices. All of the others made new highs, the S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ. The Russell did not. Small caps, it did not. So if, you, if you're interested in selling, that's the one that you ought to be interested in selling. That's the way we would be looking at it. Now, here is the pattern that we were talking about uh, on Friday, coming into this uh, January 10th date. You'll see that the uh, from the 27th of uh, <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me one second here, folks. From the 27th of December to where we got to on uh, January 10th, made a three drive to a top pattern. Each of the expansions was exactly 1.27. And uh, so far, we've broken from uh, the uh, 3287 level down to uh, 3263. Uh, well, 3260, and so far the rally back has taken us up to a 61% retracement at 3277. We're, we're a little bit below that uh, right now. So those are the ones that I'm watching as far as the really key ones to look at. Getting back to the, the futures markets for just a minute, you know, we had the grain report. It was, a, it was a bullish report, but folks, pay attention here because we've got this grain thing coming in. Uh, uh, the, the report is now out. You'll notice the March beans are trading up here around the 946, 950 level. Uh, we've been here for several days, but we have this agreement that's going to be signed on Wednesday. I don't think that agreement means anything anymore because it's pretty much in the news. But again, you know, we don't really know for sure if that's going to be the case. 877-927-6648. Someone's asking me a question, why am I talking about earthquakes? Uh, the only reason I'm talking about that, folks, is they, are, they, they come concurrently with these uh, full moons and lunar eclipse like we just had on the 10th. And with these other big things that are happening, sometimes they can cause uh, some big problems in uh, the e in the environment. So we'll just uh, leave it at that because I, you, you know, folks, astrology is one of the most difficult things to try to trade from. I, you know, I see little tiny bits and pieces, but when it gets down to push and shove, you got to keep it as simple as possible because it's all about risk control. You don't know what's going to happen next. Nobody does. And so the only thing you can control is your risk. So focus on how much money you have to risk. If you do that, you're going to be just fine. But uh, trying to predict the future, that's a pretty tough game that it's uh, really difficult. I'm actually uh, moving on to another subject here. This is the natural gas because I believe we're getting close to a really big uh, bottom here in natural gas. We've been talking about this for uh, a very, very long time. Uh, we've had a six-day rally now after making the double bottom down there at uh, at 210. We're trading around 215 this morning, 215, 216, I believe. So what we'd like to see now is a little pullback into that 213, uh, 210, maybe one more time, and we'll be out. We'll be able to look at <laughs> David White just posted a great Danish proverb: "It is difficult to make predictions, especially about the futures." Yes, that's correct. What we need is somebody like Nostradamus, but he spoke in, in quatrains and riddles, so that was difficult. Mr. Z sent an interesting chart to the uh, den today, and this is a chart of the coffee. Uh, I believe we've been waiting for this in coffee. If you'll remember, 
Uh, when we got up to that 1.27 level, about 140, uh, you know, we're down to a 116, which is the old highs back in July. That's the key thing to look at. You see the back in July, we were trading at uh, around 115. We hit 116 on Thursday. I uh, had a little bit of a rally here. We you can see the ABCD pattern there in coffee very easily from uh, December to uh, the high was made in late late December and where we are now, you can see the beautiful ABCD pattern that is there stopping exactly at the 50% level. So your risk there is below 116 if you're interested in that coffee because that's a big breakout. Remember folks, these folks in the Tiger Den were buying this coffee down here at 96 and 95 at that 78% level back in October. That was a, a monster move. You know, we exploded out of there and rallied uh, 18, well, 22, 22 cents a pound. We backed off to the 382, and boom, away it went and just uh, exploded to the upside. So coffee's probably making a, uh, you know, made a major, major bottom, and now you want to look for buys, and we're over some major, major support in coffee in here. So pay attention. We'll be right back with Stan Harley, folks, 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. We have Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letters. Stan, Happy New Year to you. Thanks for joining us today. Happy New Year, Larry. My pleasure. 
You bet. A few weeks ago, the last time we had it's been a little bit longer than that, I guess, you talked to us about the GAN Rule of Four breakout. Do you want to start with that, if you don't mind? Yeah, ab ab absolutely, uh, Larry. Um, a uh, pattern that I've been following for several months here on the stock market relates to uh, a pattern that W.D. GAN actually uh, talked about, oh gosh, nearly 100 years ago. And uh, what he noticed was if a stock or an index or a commodity uh, in, in its rally phase uh, found some area of resistance uh, and it failed to break through that resistance area three times, uh, that was something to take a look at very, very closely. If uh, on the fourth push against that resistance area, and that resistance can be a horizontal line, it can be an upward sloping line. It can even be a downward sloping line, although that's more rare. But horizontal and slightly upward sloping are very common. If on the fourth attempt at that resistance area, if it failed to break through, well, the market would uh, cascade to the downside. On the other hand, if it broke through on the fourth push, uh, it tended to break through in a resounding fashion and uh, sprinted very rapidly to the upside and never looked back. And that's exactly what I see developing right here. And uh, you've got the, the first chart on the screen, as I can see, and that's the Dow Industrials. And uh, one can see very clearly the uh, four touch points. The first one over there on the far left, January of 2018. The second in uh, September, October of 2018. The third uh, uh, occurred in uh, late July of, of last year. And the fourth push just occurred recently. And you can see we broke through that rising uh, one by eight angle. And we sprinted very predictably, very rapidly to the upside. Uh, Stan, does this give you any price objectives on the upside or just telling you that it's breaking I, out? It just tells me it's breaking out, Larry. I know that there, there's no way to derive any price objectives from this. It just tells me that the bull market is uh, very strong at this point when you see a breakout like this. And indeed, uh, we've seen... Uh, We've seen four of the five components that make up what I call the big five. I heard you referring to the Russell about 20 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. But I look at, uh, the, what, for me, the big five are the Dow Jones Industrials, the Dow Transports, the NASDAQ Composite, the S&P 500, and um, the New York, did I say the New York Composite and the NASDAQ? The one laggard uh, so far has been the Dow Transports. The Transports have not gone to a new high. Uh, I, you also mentioned the Russell. Uh, it, it, too, has not gone to a new high. But I think uh, in time, uh, later this year, I think we're going to see both of those indices in record high territory as well. Right now, the Dow, the S&P, and the NAS are kind of leading the charge here. But the others will, uh, I believe, will catch up. Well, uh, that's really pretty cool. Uh, I wanted to uh, bring one other thing here about your S&P that you were uh, uh, focused on your letter. If we take a quick look at this. Uh, by the way, congratulations, Stan, on being bullish. Uh, I mean, not just bullish, but super bullish, because uh, you have been, and the market has certainly uh, proven you correct here. So we've been looking at the uh, the SPX. So what what your what are you watching here on this uh, large cap index? Well, the S and P has got a very similar pattern. Uh, the longer-term pattern is very, very similar to the Dow. Indeed, we've got the, the GAN rule of four breakout as well. The chart you have on the screen now, uh, I'm showing the uh, cyclical pattern going back a couple of years. And what I have noticed, we tend to make more important bottoms about every 20 weeks. Uh, I found the cycle that averages about 95 and a half trading days on average, and that cycle contracts and expands. But going back many years, we tend to make important bottoms every 95 and a half uh, trading days on average, call it 20 weeks, 19.9 weeks. And each of those cycles, uh, by the way, the last occurrence of that was uh, was the low we saw in October the 3rd. Prior to that, we had a low on, uh, I believe it was June the 1st. And then prior to that was the low on December 26th of 2018. Uh, each of those cycles tends to be uh, composed of two cycle two smaller cycles i've got them labeled one and two as you can see and each of those one and two cycles tends to have two shorter cycles which i call a and b alpha and bravo and i've labeled them as such as, as one can see on, on on the chart um we completed the uh the first cycle from the october bottom on uh, december the third we're in the second one right now uh and if this this 
This 19 week, 19, 20 week cycle does not contract or expand much beyond the norm. It's due once again, right around February the 25th, mm -hmm. plus or minus a few days left or right. Um, and then uh, that, that's, that's, that's what I'm targeting right now. And I have labeled the uh, A and B, the, in the, in the, in the current sub cycle of that, the number two cycle, uh, we just saw the A, the alpha sub cycle low on January the 3rd. And we are in the process of pushing higher right now. Um, I think and my analysis is very preliminary, but I we got a little gutsy here and went ahead and put it on the chart when I sent it to you over the weekend. I think we're probably going to make a high around February the 5th, February the 6th, plus or minus. Uh, that's a moving target. I've got more research to uh, to do in that area, but my preliminary take uh, right now is that's where we're probably going to make a high, Larry. And then I would look for an orderly pullback. Uh, right around uh, into the, about the end of the February, make the next uh, 20 week cycle bottom. Wow. I noticed that you have a another chart that's interesting because it's referring again to the uh, rule of four, and that is with the, uh, uh, if you'll take a look at the uh, treasury bonds. Yes, uh, the bonds have had a very interesting pattern. Um, the chart you're putting up shows the, uh, the weekly chart of the treasury uh, bond complex, and um, that appears to me to, to be developing a, uh, a rule of four pattern as well. There it is, and I've labeled the one, two, three, and four uh, on the screen. You look at, uh, this is the 30-year bond, and if you draw a horizontal line at uh, 162 and 1630 seconds, take a look at that. That mm -hmm. horizontal line has induced resistance three times already. Mm -hmm. One way over to the left in early of 2015. Uh, again, we popped above it, significantly above it, but we got right back below it again in, at the highs in 2016. Um, the middle of last year saw another high uh, above 162 and a half. Then we broke below it again. My uh, premise is bonds are in a secular bull market like equities. So I think uh, oh, later this year, you're going to see... Uh, another push up to that level and I think we will break through and sc <laughs> scream higher and that will be the fourth push and you'll have a GAN rule of four pattern uh, evident on the bond chart as well. Uh, yeah. And I, I, I would expect to significantly higher in bonds which means lower, yes, lower interest rates as well. Yeah. Okay. Well, it certainly looks cool. Well, listen, I want to thank you for being on the show today. This is really good stuff, Stan. We'll have you on again in a few weeks, if you don't mind, because you've certainly been spot on. The folks here love to hear your uh, description of what's going on. Oh, one other question we're having about gold. Do you have any feelings on the gold market, uh, Stan? Uh, I was watching your commentary on gold uh, about a half an hour ago. I, I, I share your views. I, I think uh, right now we are 100 months uh, from, the, from the prior high. We tend to make highs every 95 to 100 weeks. Uh, okay. I'm sorry, months in that market. So, yeah, I'm not too positive. Okay, thank you very much, Dan. We'll see you soon. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. 
The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks. We certainly appreciate Stan Harley being on. Gosh, he had some really great information. Uh, let's take a look at that uh, the gold market. We backed off about seven dollars. Uh, well, excuse me, about six dollars since we've opened this morning, rallied up and uh, came down. So it's very, very important to watch that bottom at 1540, folks, because if we break below that, that sets up uh, tremendously lower prices uh, in gold and silver. So this is going to be a key week for those. Now, also, I wanted to mention the uh, copper market. Uh, we had a uh, really nice ABCD move here uh, two weeks ago up there at that 86 level. We dropped 10 cents uh, a pound, just like we did back in November. So far, it's held up relatively well, but we believe that the copper has got a chance to get back to that 272 level, down about $15 a pound from uh, where we are right now, if, if in fact that pattern is working. You look at those old highs as either support and resistance. That's all related to supply and demand. That's really what we're looking at. Let's switch information here for just a second here and move over uh, to the bond markets. I want to bring this to your attention since Stan was talking about it. Uh, here is uh, what we're looking at in the bonds. You'll notice that we made that major high up there at that 168 level. Uh, that was, uh, if you remember, uh, that was a retracement level going back on the charts <laughs> from uh, the yearly charts. Because it bonds topped two and a half a year and a half ago, folks. So you know we made a high in the bonds up there in that 173, 74 level. Uh, then we broke down to 143, rallied up to 168. And what we've been doing now since uh, October, uh, well actually since August the third, is to uh, be been going lower. We've seen lower lows, lower highs. So the market is still bearish. Now if we can get above 161 in the uh, Treasury bonds, the March Treasury bonds, then this uh, whole scenario could change and you could have a, another move up. But the reason why it's so very important there is if you'll look at that price level, that spike that occurred, uh, that was when we had the Iranian crisis, when the uh, when, when they were fighting over there and the, for that two-hour war, whatever it was, but that was the spike. From there, we dropped three handles in two days. I mean, it was really quite... Uh, quite amazing. And since that time, all we've been able to do is rally back to a 61% retracement. So the key level in those bonds is at 161. If we close above that, we have to remember what uh, Stan Harley told us about the bonds because he's incredibly uh, bullish bonds, i.e. lower interest rates. I don't go along with that, but you know that's what makes uh, a bakery. Some people like chocolate cake. Some people like vanilla cake. So that's what we're paying attention to here this morning. All right. We have another question, and that is uh, about the grains. I, I tried to uh, give you an idea of the grain markets. I showed the March uh, soybeans. I believe we have some resistance up in these areas, especially uh, if you want to 
want to want to look at one that's really harmonic. I mean, you talk about a market that is that is just absolutely perfect. Is take a look at this uh, March soybean oil chart, folks. I mean, you can't get any more perfect chart than this. Look at this. You have a, a big bottom form. You back off to a three rate true retracement. You make a giant ABCD level, and you you've only come off, you've only come off a penny. That's only six hundred dollars, and it's taken seven days to do that. So that's still bullish. You've got to watch it. Uh, as a potential bottoming in here at around the uh, the 3360 to 34 level, so that's a uh, it's a very very bullish pattern, much like we're we're seeing in the coffee. Uh, both of those look uh, have potential to be, you know, really uh, really really bullish. So we'll see. Uh, remember, we haven't had any commodity inflation here for a very long time. That's why the Fed's able to, you know, drop these interest rates and you know flood the market with uh, money and. And the, someone's asked about the repo rate, folks. I tell you, I uh, it's it's really wild out there. So this, let's just give you an example here. This is from the Fed itself. These are statistics right from this Fed showing you these uh, big spikes that we're having. Uh, and you'll notice here that uh, this is the uh, repo rate that they're talking about here. They're this is the total assets that they have. So they're pumping a lot of money into this, just like Shane Smolian has told us several times that that's really what's when running it. So whenever they stop, we'll have to pay attention. Okay, another question, 877-927. I have a question for the folks here at the Tiger Den. Has anybody tried any of this synthetic beef that they're talking about, impossible meat or, uh, you know, whatever it is? I don't uh, – uh, I've never tried it. I don't, you know, I don't understand why these guys would try something like this that's got all chemical. I mean, there's nothing but uh, this guy's chemical. But I have never tried it. I was wondering if anybody else had tried it. I've seen 50-50. Some people think it's good. Some people think it's not too good. But from someone who eats meat three times a day, uh, I was just curious if there was any in the, anybody in the room. Evidently not. There's all, uh, well, I know that Tom's not a meat eater, so maybe he's tried it. Anyway, let's go on and we'll see what uh, we need. 877-927-6648. So we'll wait here for a second here. I want to double check the markets. Uh, I haven't checked it since the stand was on. Uh, we're having a very nice... Uh, Hold on just a second here, folks. Uh, a lot of there should be a lot of support, folks, in the uh, in the gold at uh, four, uh, fifteen forty nine. If you're going to look at gold today, it really should hold that fifteen uh, forty nine. Well, it's been as low as fifteen. Yeah, fifteen forty nine is going to be a key level uh, to pay attention to. But on the upside, that level is at fifteen sixty five. If we can clear that. Then gold has got a chance to have a, a move to the upside. But right now we have to still think it's bearish, uh, mainly because of that 618 on the daily, and that's it. Folks, I got some interesting statistics here from one of our listeners, uh, I believe up in the state of, uh, of uh, Oregon uh, over the uh, – over the weekend, and I, I wanted to share them with you because it's uh, it, it's it, it borders on the uh, uh, unbelievable. Actually, if you'll give me a second here, I will. Uh, okay, let me get this up here. There we go. All right, here here's here's the figures I want to share with you, folks. On July 8, 1932, the Dow Jones traded at 4056. On March the 6th of 2009, it traded at 6469. That was exactly 28,000 calendar days, 28,000 calendar days. On September the 3rd, 1929, the Dow traded at 386. On January the 9th, just last Thursday, the Dow traded at 28,988, exactly 33,000 calendar days. I mean, can you believe they're even numbers? 28,000 calendar days and 33,000 calendar days? That has to be a... Uh, you know, it has to be a really uh, an interesting one to uh, to look at. So anyway, that's what we're paying attention to. I think it's just I don't know if it means anything, but the fact that if they're even numbers, uh, it's just absolutely you think that would be almost impossible to see those key levels. And maybe that, hey, maybe this uh, day, the 10th was not a key day. I don't know. But I'm just telling you what I see. All right, let's move on. The uh, crude oil is uh, continuing to break. We've uh, broken below that key support that we thought was going to be there at 59. Remember, we said the next level you have to watch is that 57.20 uh, per barrel. We're very oversold. 
in the crude oil, but you know you can be oversold for a long time and you can be overbought for a long time. So that's a very interesting one to uh, pay attention to. Okay, um, let's move on to the one other question that someone had, and that was about the Bitcoin. Let's get Bitcoin up here to take a look at it. We'll be right back, folks. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found the computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks. I posted the chart of the euro versus the U.S. dollar. This is a daily chart. Uh, for, if you're a technician, this is very important because you can see we've just completed an ABCD pattern up there at that 114 level. Uh, that was perfect, uh, right to the money. Uh, and Gant, not Gant, but Gartley said in his book on page 222 that look for the ABCD retracements in a bear market to get short and ABCD corrections in a bull market to get long. This is a bear market, so that certainly has been completed. So watch the euro for potential sales as we look up in here. That means that U.S. dollar should be bullish. 
But remember, if the U.S. dollar goes below that coveted 95.80 level, this would no longer be bullish. It would be a very, very bearish pattern. And the same thing with the euro. If the euro, euro gets above 115, 116, that would change this whole picture and say that uh, it's going to go uh, a lot ho higher instead of lower. So watch that one very, very closely. Uh, with all the fires that we're having in Australia, the Australian dollar has held up uh, relatively well. You'll be able to see here when I post this chart that it held up pretty nicely and then broke uh, down to major support. We've had a little bit of a bounce just to, uh, right off the 61% retracement. But here again, you can see the ABCD correction in a bear market. When it got up to 70.50, we were screaming that that was a really important sell point. And we did drop a little more than one and a half handles from there. So the key to watch now is if we can hold that 68, 60, 68, 70 level in the Australian dollar. So uh, we'll uh, keep it keep you informed as we walk through here. All right, we've got the end of the show coming up now. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. And on a programming note, I'm trying to uh, get our good friend Tim Boston on again this week because he's had some really interesting calls about the Bitcoin and Bitcoin is in really key level. As you can see here, the chart that I posted uh, just a few minutes ago, it's uh, gone sideways after a really move uh, breaking out to the upside from that uh, 7,000 level. So watch it close.